So here is why. And uh, I am starting him again. And this will be his first time. Or eh, I think this is actually the second time with the bridle. But as you can see, I am um, using my body. I kind of felt when I went to push on him a little bit that he'd lean on me. And um, so it's really important, I felt, that I wanted him to not feel like he could lean back necessarily because if you're kind of standing in front of your horse, kind of like I was uh, in the doorway, I don't want him to think that he can just run me over. So just I was playing around with this some and um, the feeling that I was looking for was just to have him soft against my body. Uh, he didn't necessarily have to move, but I didn't want him to kind of lean and push back like he was doing there. So it might be a little hard for you to see kind of on this video, <laughs> but he is wanting to just push back. And again, I've been in certain scenarios where, you know, you, you kind of have to use your body to block your horse. And if they just run over the top of you, that's never a good situation. And I also find this is a little bit of a trust building exercise and getting him to relax uh, through his body. And so the type of energy that I'm trying to feel through his muscles, you kind of want it nice and soft and malleable and you don't want to feel any of that tension in there. So, and you can see he's starting to respond pretty nicely. And give him a little rub there. And I ask again. You'll see I've got, that's the lunge line that I have kind of looped over his back. Um, but again, just working on waiting on him to kind of not lean. And there he gave me a step. That was pretty good. And then he took actually a nice deep breath right there. And this is also good work for him because he can tend to get a little nervous in smaller spaces, a little claustrophobic. So I want to make sure that I can get him nice and soft. So I started to get some really nice reactions, some licking and chewing, um, getting him to relax. So then I went back to the bridle. And again, when you're introducing the bit to a horse, you want to make sure you go nice and slow. Uh, I have worked with him previously on introducing him to my finger in his mouth. And uh, this will be, like I said, I think the second time. And he's still a little bit unsure about uh, me touching his ears and his pole. And the bit, it's loose. It's not pulling up high. And all for all the people that are going to say you should go bitless, um, I do believe in training my horses bitless, but also believe in making sure all of our horses have tools and to train them uh, very humanely with the bit. Especially in my sport, we are required to have a bit uh, in dressage as well. So it's an important for them to learn and you can see now he's pretty calm with it he's not mouthing it at all and another thing that I've noticed with him is I think because of the bandages and stuff that he's had to have on his face he does not like um, any type of nose pressure or halter pressure and so he he seems to actually like the bit a little bit better um, I'm actually responding to my working student who's asking me a question, but now I'm just going and again, doing the little bit of a push game, just trying to get him to relax a little bit more. It's interesting to see he's starting to do a little bit of head drop and just working on getting the body a little bit looser <laughs> and You'll see that I'm pushing because he's really leaning against me, which is his natural instinct. Um, you know, they tend to lean into and you have to teach them to kind of soften and push away. This is just a fun little exercise that I thought I would play with uh, this day because I felt him kind of 
pushed to kind of walk over me in the beginning. And so I wanted to work on this some. And I'm just going to give him a minute here. And there he responded much better for when I put my shoulder kind of under. And I do know he he is near the wall on the back side. Um, but again, it's it's good for them to kind of figure out a little bit. And I also necessarily wouldn't suggest doing this with a freshly wild horse. He has been with me now for a while. So I've been able to build up the trust. I've desensitized. I've worked um, with being in front of him and all those things. So in case, you know, you are in a dangerous situation, uh, if they want to strike or get nervous. It's just something that I like to have that feeling with my horses where they become soft and gumby to the touch. Now... I have him uh, outside and I'm going to do a little bit of work to introduce the bit. So I've already worked with him a fair amount with the groundwork and stuff. So he already knows a fair bit. Um, and you see, I'm going to place my hand right on the rib cage for him. I have it up a little higher, but essentially your leg goes down the middle of the rib cage. And for him, I know he gets a little stiff through his ribs and when he gets nervous he kind of locks up through there and so I want him uh, to kind of soften up a little bit I'm not pushing super hard I just have just some pressure on there you'll see that I have this lunge line on that has a chain on it I do not like this lunge line but it's the only one that I have right now for some reason in the move, my other ones got um, misplaced. So not my favorite, but it's kind of what I have at the moment. You can see I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how he's handling the bit. His mouth is pretty nice and quiet. And again, I'm just working on a little here, introducing him to some pressure. And what I'm trying to do is mimic what my leg and my hands would do when I'm on. The idea is to best prepare our horses on the ground first, so then they will understand when you are on their back. And now I'm going to switch sides. And I take this time to kind of Touch his ears even more. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll know he's been a little pole sensitive since his surgery. Um, but he seems to start relaxing and getting more uh, trusting about me touching his ears. And you'll see, I body clipped him kind of halfway. It's not because he was bad or anything. It was just, he was so dirty. And I just haven't had the time to finish the clip, but I will. So now I'm going to go on this side. Again, I'm kind of asking for a little bit of pressure. And he did good to soften to the bit. And then I wanted to engage the rib cage a little bit more. So now I'm going to put my hand up a little bit higher. Like if I was going to be riding. And there he kind of chewed it a little bit, but then responded well. And that was really good. And there's, again, there's not a lot of pressure. It's just kind of the weight of my hand. When I'm asking. So now he thinks that when I go right there to move away. He's pretty smart. And 
and there you're starting to follow and get pretty soft, which is good. Well, that was really nice. And I could have even given a little sooner there because you could see he kind of softened even sooner than I gave to him. But sometimes we make mistakes in our timing and all we can do is try to get better and better. Of course there I like stuck my hand in his eyeball, poor thing. <laughs> I was just trying to give him a rub on the forehead that is one of his cues that he knows that he's done well. So just uh, finishing up here with the session with uh, putting the rope over his back. And again, he's had this done a lot, um, but it's been a while. So reintroducing uh, him and uh, knocking off some of that rust that we have. You can see, you can just sometimes be a little sensitive. Again, I did poke him in the eyeball, to be fair. Um, so he was pretty good with the rope around his bum. And then I just finish up with a nice head rub. And overall, it was a pretty good day for a while.